Hello everyone and welcome back to my subscribers. If you're not already a subscriber, I'll put a link here for you. And please don't forget to like and share the video. It really helps with the ratings. Today I've got the LDA from Para Ordnance. Now LDA stands for Long Double Action. It's kind of weird if you stop and think about it. It's a 1911 with a double action trigger pull. All 1911s are single, stat, or single action except this weird one. Why did they do it? I'm really not too sure other than you can make a few assumptions that perhaps people weren't comfortable carrying a 1911 cocked and locked. They liked the idea of a long trigger pull like a revolver or something. Or perhaps they were trying to get, El Para Ordnance was trying to get into uh, a particular competition division. I remember running into the LDA at the Steel Challenge back in the early 2000s, I believe it was. I can't quite remember the exact year, but Para had a booth up and they were, had a full-size LDA and I thought it was a really smooth trigger. I, I had no problem shooting that gun at all, but it's just kind of freaky having this, the double action. Let me show you the gun itself. This is a little commander size. It comes with a seven round mag. And when you cock it, notice the hammer doesn't stay back, it goes forward. And then the trigger is like a traditional revolver trigger. So as I pull the trigger, you'll see the hammer come back and then there it breaks. It's really smooth trigger. The reset's a little long. You'd hear the click there, you'd think it's ready, but it's not. So we'll get a little bit further and there's our reset. So that's a fairly long reset, but most double action guns are long when it comes to the reset. I enjoyed shooting this gun. It's not something I would go out and do uh, purchase for my own, but it's 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 different, that's for sure. But I had no problem shooting it. It's it's really smooth. The it's very complicated inside the lower half. I've done a few videos on how to take the lowers apart on the 1911s. I'll put links here for you so you can see that how to take them apart, put them back together. I'm not going to go through this. It's very difficult. There's a lot of springs inside the lower to make this double action work. But go back to the gun itself. You know, we have the commander length. It's real short. It's just got some dot sights, some real basic, basic sights. Take down of it. It's a little different. It's got a two piece guide rod. So what that means is you'll notice here at the end, it's a hex size. So we're going to put the wrench in there and we're going to loosen it up and it's going to bring out the guide rod. So there's one half of the guide rod. That gun will shoot without the guide rod, without that piece in there, but I wouldn't recommend it. So then at this point, we'll bring it back and we'll take it apart like a traditional 1911. We'll pop that out. Use my tweezers to pop that out. There we go. It's a little tight. And then the slide will come right off. The spring, there is not much of a spring at all. And the spring is affixed to the base of the, the recoil guide rod. The guide rod itself just screws into that. So then we got to get our bushing out. First we remove the barrel plug. It's keyed on this particular gun. So that's our, our little uh, guide rod plug. And then our bushing is next to nothing. It's, it's fairly tight. So I'm going to have to use a tool on it. And then it just comes right out. But that is a very skimpy bushing. And then our barrel comes out. So that's that's the, the little short barrel. This is a Series 80 gun, and I'll put a link to how to take this apart. I'll put a link here for you on that, so you can take the firing pin out and clean it and the Series 80 components. And if you're interested in bypassing the Series 80, I'll put a link to that as well. Assembly is just basically the reverse. You put the barrel in, pushing. Got to use a tool on it. Our plug, our spring. And to get this down, we're going to have to turn our barrel lug this way. But it's just like any other 1911. Oh, before I put that together, let's look at the bottom to the to the frame itself. A lot more springs than typical. You usually don't see a spring here on the trigger. There's a Series 80 component right here. Get a little bit of just a lot of moving parts inside this gun. So 
there's a lot of stuff inside there that I am just not going to touch. This gun does have the ambidextrous combat style safeties. I really like these low profile safeties. I'd, I'd try to put this low profile stuff on all my 1911s if I could. I just, I just love the feel of it. I don't like anything poking me in the hand when I'm shooting. And this gun shot very well. You know, for the 45, it didn't recoil that much, even such a short gun. And the trigger was nice. So then we'll slide it down, get our, get it lined up, put that on, and then our guide rod, drop it in, screw it in, and just get it tight, and just finger tight. And that's it. Check our function, good to go. But that's the Para LDA. If you ever get to shoot one, do it. It's really cool. Do you want one to buy one? I don't know. That's up to you. I personally don't see the need for it, but you know, it, it is a nice gun to shoot. I guess if you stumble over a deal and just snatch one up for a song, go for it. Well, thanks for watching and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews.